Yours is my passion, my life. I seek within it those moments of pure clarity and beauty only found in nature. I seek the next adventure, the next challenge, to push myself to my physical and mental limits, to understand the world around me and how I can better myself, to be the best I can be. Stronger, faster, the people I meet along my path, my friends, my clients, the film crews and local peoples. My goal is to share this love, this passion with as many people as possible and inspire others to get out and enjoy nature, to travel and explore, expand your horizons and master your environment. What an introduction. Um, <laughs> Megan, it, it's great to be here talking with you this morning. Thank you. I'm assuming that you are just on a flying visit through London and you've probably just come back from some fantastic adventure or exploration <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I've just been out in Switzerland training uh, survival instructors for the past couple of weeks, um, which was super exciting. Um, before that, I flew out from back in from South Africa. We've been filming down there uh, some various survival shows. Um, I'm off to Ireland next, so not super exotic, but off to survive the wilds of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be hard. Lots of pints of Guinness. That'll yeah, be hard to survive. Wet. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, a quote that you said in a previous interview that throughout your childhood, your teens, your adulthood, you were your young adult, you were really trying to work out how you fit into nature. It's a really interesting concept that I don't think probably many of us have thought about. But out of that, out of this passion, you carved a career. I mean, that's quite unusual. How did that come about? Um, I think it's a, it was a lot of it was luck, really, and um, I guess this sort of like inherent um, sort of need for pushing boundaries and sort of exploring and finding sort of where I fit out, it fit in the world. Um, so it's, it's been this amazing journey, um, sort of from family holidays where like, so we used to go off. My dad was a geologist, so we sort of got dragged off around the mountains of the UK looking at rocks, uh, which when you're 10 years old was like, oh no, <laughs> not another rock. <laughs> um, but now I kind of wish I'd listened a little bit more to him. Uh, and from there, it's like I sort of found the military cadets. Um, and I was really fortunate sort of going through sort of military cadets that, uh, and the adventurous training that the military provided us that uh, I was able to go off and do uh, some of these amazing adventures, like ice climbing in Scotland at sort of 17, um, sort of whitewater kayaking, you know, at 15 on these amazing journeys uh, that although female cover should be provided, there weren't any female teachers or female members of the military that were actually able to accompany me. And thankfully, like the staff, were happy to take me along as a, as a female on these trips. Um, so I was so lucky that with that, like, gender was never an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and I was allowed to follow like, this just amazing journey to then, I did a degree in outdoor education and um, studied sort of in New Zealand uh, and in Czech Republic as well uh, before then. So there are qualifications you can do to kind of get here, but mainly it's, it's kind of practice and really living, living that life. Yeah, so if you want to work in the outdoor industry, there's a, we have a very structured sort of uh, program in the UK of how to become a mountain uh, leader or how to become a mountain guide or whitewater kayaking, sort of whatever discipline that you choose to, to go down. Um, but then above and beyond that, so if I'm hiring people to come and lead expeditions for me, is I want to give my clients the best um, adventure possible. So it's then I'm, it's really important to then find people above and beyond uh, sort of just the qualifications mm -hmm. and their experience. So you spend um, 11 months of the year traveling, working with contestants on survival shows or traveling with your clients, as you've just said, on expeditions that you put together. Why do you think now, why are people so passionate about having these experiences and either actually doing them themselves or watching it on TV? What, what's going on? <laughs> I think it's a really interesting 
interesting um, sort of topic of discussion. Uh, something I could talk for hours about. Um, and I think that I really believe that so we haven't really evolved to live as we do now. And sort of the m pressures of modern life um, on our children as well. There's like there's a huge um, sort of pressure on them. There's very little room now in sort of education to actually show creativity, to show initiative. Um, and there's something about the wilderness that calls to people. Um, and particularly, I find with the bushcraft and survival, I find with the mountaineering, I don't get quite the same sort of clients. Mm -hmm. But with the bushcraft and survival, there's something about going off into the wilderness, building your fire, and sort of living under with your own skills and um, your own initiative. Um, I mean, it's just incredible, really, sort of the response that people have to the wilderness environments, and it's just calling more and more people. There's a rise in sort of adventure bloggers, actually from London as well, people who are escaping the rat race, uh, who are going off and doing these exciting uh, projects. Uh, so it's, it's really inspiring. Yeah, and um, it's about, I suppose, people taking themselves out of their comfort zones. Yeah. Is this out of your comfort zone, <laughs> <laughs> sitting here on this stage? Um, well, I think, because I having, having been here last night and just sort of felt like the overwhelming sort of um, support uh, amongst sort of uh, the community here, uh, it's just, I, no, I don't, feel, I don't feel nervous. I mean, I guess what I do is quite different to, to a lot of people. Uh, so, and I'm also an adrenaline act addict as well. So <laughs> as soon as I can ride like a wave of adrenaline, I'm more than happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think what put me out of my comfort zone was actually seeing on like, on the sort of uh, joining instructions of like sort of the business attire. And I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I turn up in my jungle kit with my machete on my back, <laughs> am I going to be arrested or am I going to be allowed in? So <laughs> Yeah, so that, that, I guess that put me out of my comfort zone was like, oh mm -hmm. crap, what do I wear? <laughs> yeah. Well, you look great yeah, and you looked you. amazing <laughs> last night, I can, I can tell you. Thank you. Um, now, I think, I suppose uh, as well, the, uh, the kind of survival experience, it probably teaches people a lot of emotional skills and taps into kind of um, things like fear, taking risks, competition. Is that kind of what you find that people learn from these experiences? I believe you're actually going to be writing a book about it, which is going to be published next year. Yes, yeah, I've got a book coming out in April, which... Um, um, looks very much at um, sort of the emotional response of survival uh, with transferable skills to sort of how my coping mechanisms and how through sort of various sort of life and death situations that I've come into contact with, um, I've developed these coping mechanisms that could be transferable and not necessarily the right way of doing things, but it's how I've uh, sort of come to sort of when I'm dealing with a uh, sort of life death situation of how I can overcome that situation and actually focus on what's going on at that moment mm -hmm. rather than being distracted by everything else that's going on around me. Uh, we were talking over dinner last night and you said that humans are way more dangerous and terrifying than animals and you've had some very close encounters with animals. Can you just explain that and give us some examples of what you mean? Yeah, so well, I find like when I'm traveling, I go off, often to some really remote areas, um, often where people have never seen Westerners before. Um, and I find that people are much more unpredictable than the wildlife. So I've come into contact with bears. Um, I've been stalked by lions as well, which that was, was quite a terrifying experience as well. Um, but I put myself into their habitat. So I kind of, I accept that risk and I understand the risk that I take uh, when, when I do that. But what I find is people are so unpredictable. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's so many, um, you know, particularly as a female traveling in some of these areas as well, there's certain areas of the world that I've been to where I knew that if there wasn't a male team close by, I would literally have just disappeared. Um, and, and I find that uh, quite scary, really. And I find, I, what I find is that as I'm traveling more now, I'm finding that the world's becoming less stable. Um, and something that uh, I'm, myself and my partner, who also does the same work, we're being approached more for now is actually uh, for high profile uh, people who are receiving death threats um, and they want their children to be trained in sort of prepperism and sort of escape and evasion. So, I mean, a technical term for it is when the shit hits the fan, um, is, that, <laughs> is that what do the children do in those situations because they're targets uh, for kidnapping and mm -hmm. um, ransom and things. Um, so we're working with some high-profile children yeah. uh, coming up with some plans of what they do if, mm -hmm. if they need to run. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm sure you will have inspired a whole generation of female survival experts, and we'll be seeing some more of those coming through. But and I think like many women in this room, you've broken through in kind of male-dominated industry. What's been the hardest thing about that for you, and what has surprised you? Um, I think we're like, when sort of working purely within the outdoor industry, uh, I find like uh, the people within the outdoor industry are very um, accepting of people from different backgrounds, gender, 
Um, so that it was only more, more recently when I've been working within the TV industry that I've discovered this. And I, and I don't think sexism is the right word for it. I think it's just a lack, total lack of uh, understanding. In, in their heads, they've got this view of what, um, you know, what a survival expert or survivalist should be, and this isn't it. <laughs> it's like sort of the beards and you know, the gnarly men. And I think for some, some people that are not used to working with women, uh, it kind of undermines their manly grrness, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. <laughs> to have a female doing, doing that job. Uh, and I think I was quite surprised actually recently I had a conversation with an exec producer who said to me, um, you know, when I first met you, I thought you were kind and I thought that was a weakness, but now I'm, v I'm very aware that this is not a weakness. Okay. Yeah, and I think there is a difference in how women and men sort of interact with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that can be um, misinterpreted as, as potentially a weakness. Mm -hmm. But those skills are, are really important in these situations that you yes. find yourself in. Yeah. Um, so now Bear Grylls has famously said that you are 90%, <laughs> uh, you are stronger than 99% of men that he knows. Um, <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming he means physical strength, emotional strength, all of those things. And he's a, he's a big, big fan of yours. Now, what's it like working? With, with Bear because he does push the boundaries quite far and now on his shows he does take the contestants into some to strange places doing some quite crazy things and I, I'm thinking of that sort of hydrating enema. Oh yes. Thing that he made them all do. <laughs> what, tell us about working with Bear. Um, he, it's just amazing. I mean, he's really inspiring and like what he's done for the outdoor industry and encouraging young people and adults as well to get back out into the outdoors is just is phenomenal. Uh, I love working with him and on his shows because we do push the boundaries, but we work with uh, an incredible team that we can walk the line uh, and we can bring it back. And uh, that's just, just what's so amazing. Having that freedom and having that trust and the relationship between him and like the small team that he has mm -hmm. um, is just phenomenal. And it's just amazing to be part of that because we can do some incredible things that we would never be allowed to do or able to do uh, anywhere else. Brilliant. Now, I'm sure we have lots of questions. Patty, you want to ask something? Um, Megan, I was at your table last night, and I just overheard this and found it fascinating, so maybe you can explain what you're talking about. What you were talking about, um, is it true that you have found that as you travel around the world with this rising nationalism and, and inwardness that so many countries are um, experiencing, that this has made your job more difficult, more challenging, and sometimes more dangerous? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, it's a real problem. And um, I've really seen, because of the areas that we go to, I've definitely seen sort of destabilization um, in the world. Uh, we're seeing more firearms on the streets. Uh, some of the sort of wilderness areas that we're going to are more dangerous as well because people are escaping um, to those areas. Places like uh, Mexico, um, where sort of the drug cartels uh, you sort of used to run rife, the drug cartels are now moving more to kidnapping and uh, sort of making their money out of that. Uh, and these things are becoming much, uh, much less predictable. Um, and we're having to be sort of with the high profile clients that I work with, uh, we have to be very, very aware and like situational awareness uh, is such an important part of that. Uh, and just being very aware and sort of listening to the little voice inside that um, sort of picks up that subconscious that picks up on um, sort of the vibes that are going on around you. Uh, and it's very, very important like, with what I do to be able to tap into those, that, those emotions of what's going on, uh, to be able to react to any situation that might arise. I think we have time for one more question from the floor, if anybody has any. If not, I have a question for you. <laughs> Bit of a silly one, but um, I can't imagine going heading off anywhere without my sun cream, my moisturiser, my feather pillow, whatever. Any little treats or luxuries that you pack with you that you, can't, you really can't live without wherever you are in the world? Um, well, one of the luxuries that I'm trying to start packing more is actually my dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, she's, she's amazing, like, because she, she lives outside with me when we're working, like, on non-technical jobs in Europe, she comes along too, and uh, we've got an adventure planned uh, early next year where we're going to be crossing Alaska, just the two of us, oh self-supported, hunting for our own food, and um, it's just actually just having her along as a companion is, is just amazing, and she's, like, she's got her own, like, total, like, attitude yeah. going on. <laughs> And maybe just one very quick personal highlight from your career. Um, well, I think it's just where life is going at the moment. Is um, I, I never had a path in mind, uh, and just some of the opportunities that have opened up have just just 
been incredible. Um, and the people that I meet along sort of my route, uh, I think that for me is like the highlight, you know, for so one day being able to interact uh, with native peoples, um, sharing skills with them, and then the next day, you know, working with a politician, um, doing escape and evasion exercises. Um, I mean, it's just, you can't ask for like a more exciting like career. It's just phenomenal. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, I, I, you should read um, Megan's blog. It's amazing. It's really interesting. And I can't wait for the book to come out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.